Um, I'm uh, Anne Masoni. I'm the Dean of the School at the International Center of Photography. Welcome. Um, I want to start by thanking the Society for Photographic Education, who we remain affiliated with and who has been generous enough to let us use their Zoom account. SPE is a member-based organization for those of you who aren't familiar and will be dropping their website in the chat window momentarily. Again, for those of you who are new to Photofica, please um, send me your email address in the chat win window. Please direct um, that chat to me um, individually. Um, and that's so that we can share with you updates directly in addition to the social media chats that we do um, on the photo professor um, uh, group. Um, please today, especially um, as we did last week, use the, ro uh, the, ro the chat feature in a robust way. We're collecting all of the suggestions and information that those of you all who are teaching studio lighting classes in a virtual setting might have um, to share. Um, and we will, uh, as we did um, last session, uh, be collating all of that and dropping that on our site um, so that you have that as uh, information. In addition to that, we do record these events so that they'll be available to you uh, for review um, in the future. So I'm going to go ahead and pass this on to John, um, and then we'll get started. Hey, everybody. Uh, my name is John Fryer. I'm Associate Professor of Cross-Disciplinary Media in the Department of Photo and Film uh, in the School of the Arts at uh, Virginia Commonwealth University. Uh, and we're just going to go through a round of introducing ourselves. So I'm going to send it to Anne. And then we have uh, a few panelists who are going to talk about their experience teaching uh, studio lighting in this virtual space. So I'll, uh, Anne, you want to, or we'll excuse me. Betsy. Yeah, go to Betsy again. Hello. Thank okay. you. I have a sister named Anne. So I'm used to being mixed up. Um, so I'm Betsy Schneider and I wear two hats. I'm, uh, well, many hats, but I'm a, they, the, I don't know, the founder and a lecturer in the online digital photography program at Arizona State. And I teach uh, adjunct at Emerson College here in Boston. Um, and I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let the, today's panelists introduce themselves. And then we're going to go around and I'll call on them. Um, we've got five people who've agreed to come talk about their strategies for, for their classes and really excited to have them. So we're gonna just start with a round of, of introductions and I'm gonna pass it to you, Brady. Hi, I'm Brady Robinson. I'm a photographer based in Baltimore. Currently I'm teaching photography for Loyola University, Maryland and Goucher College. Each fall I teach studio lighting at UMBC. Great. Elena, you're next. Hello, everybody. I'm Elena Volkova. I'm Associate Professor of Photography at Stevenson University, and it is in Baltimore County. I teach um, everything, and studio lighting, I teach every two years. Thank you. Right. Jeff. Hi, I'm Jeff Delanoy. I'm Professor of Art at Notre Dame of Maryland University, um, also in Baltimore. And like Elena, I teach everything in the photo program in our women's college. Barbara. Hi, uh, Barbara Proud or B Proud. I'm an adjunct professor at the University of the Arts in Philadelphia, where I teach uh, consecutive studio lighting classes, um, a fashion editorial class and a business class in photography. And I am also on, on continuing education faculty at ICP. So happy to be here. And Lindsay. Um, hi, can you hear me? I'm having some computers. Yeah. Um, my name is Lindsay Mativier, and I'm currently an adjunct professor at the University of North Carolina in Greensboro. That's all I'll okay. say. All right, thanks. So, so what we're doing, and I, I, Anne may have already said this, so apologies if I'm going to repeat it. We're going to follow some the what we did the last two weeks ago, where we're going to. Uh, have it mainly be kind of almost like a workshop where the, all five of our guests are going to talk briefly about about their about their classes and I, I've invited them all to talk for five minutes about what what they think is important um, and then you can put questions in the chat and later unmute yourself and we'll have a discussion um, so we're going to start with Brady and I hand it over to you 
Thank you. I'm going to share my screen. Are there permissions set for me to do so? Let me see. Yes. Hello, everyone. I'm Brady Robinson, and I teach studio lighting every fall at UMBC. And when the pandemic hit, I completely transformed my home into a live workspace. I transformed my studio into a gym and my living room into a photo studio. So this is me and full um, pandemic regalia about to teach online. So I live in a very small row house in Baltimore. It's not very wide. It's probably wide enough for a six foot seamless backdrop. And I wanted to, um, my classes are very interactive, collaborative and hands-on. And I wanted to simulate that and um, on the online space. So I started off doing a lot of collaborations. Meet Elena Volkova, my patron saint of photography in Baltimore. Elena and I did a lot of collaborations. In my experience, students get very intimidated when they go into a studio and start using a lot of gear, um, strobes and um, flash off camera, etc. So I always start students with speed lights and I always um, incorporate gels. I really love color. So shooting with gels has been a lot of fun. So when my class first started in the semester, Elena and I did a lot of collaborations. I would always do a test shoot and then share my exposures and my working methods with my students. So these are all taken in my living room with Elena and the first assignment in my studio lighting class is on mixing light, how to mix um, natural and artificial light, how to mix um, color gels. So then we moved the party to a park. I live two blocks from a really great park, Patterson Park in Baltimore. So Elena and I did some um, demos in the park and I'm finding that um, this spirit of collaboration and recording demos, we even made some YouTube videos has been very helpful. My class was a four hour class. So it was really a challenge to pace how I'm delivering that content. Um, uh, this is us before our YouTube fame in Elena's basement. Um, we were doing some uh, uh, Marlena Dietrich butterfly lighting demo. So one morning I started my class at Elena's, which is about 20 minutes away, then took a break, drove back down to my house and started the other portion of class. So in my experience, I find that short and sweet is best. So I would pace class like every 30 to 45 minutes, we would be on to another topic. Um, this is my student, Samantha Martin. She was, I wanted to commend my students for the challenges of working at home and being very creative. Um, she made a workspace out of her dorm and she was shooting um, with the speed light on and off camera. She was very resourceful about her use of color. So she started this um, self-portrait series. And this is her setup. And I've um, posted these on my website. So I'll share this work with you all later. We also did some um, product shots I have a fine art and a commercial background. So I let students take their work either way. I, first of all, at the end of the day, it's about learning how to shape light. So I wanna make sure they have all the skills to um, really shoot in all sorts of environments, on location, in the studio. Um, this is a student's final project. She did very <coughs> self portraits with color. And then she wanted to simulate um, a product shoot but using her own items from around her room. So there were different forms of self-portraiture. This is another student at UMBC, Faith Carter. And I have to give a shout out to Chris Pierogi, who's here. Hello, Chris, thank you for helping my students. At UMBC, faculty and students had to be tested before coming to campus. And I'm so grateful that students were able to check out equipment for the entire semester, which really helped a lot. So I, I had a lot of visiting artists. I feel like just a 15 to 20 minute break from a visiting artist 
both working in the field, fine art or commercial is really helpful. And I always see a direct influence of their expertise and skills shared with my students. I'm very lucky to live in a place that has um, great photographers. Um, I also had Alex Palumbo um, from New York give a demo on shooting from inside. Crystal Whitman, who is a Baltimore photographer gave a demo on um, on location and how to shape light. I also had Matt LeVere visit us. Matt is a photographer based in Detroit and he's doing a lot of commercial work with using FaceTime shoots and using the CLOS app or CLOS. I always mispronounce that. It's kind of like FaceTime, but it allows you to do remote shooting. Now, of course, Matt's working with models and they know their light, they know their angles. But because of Matt's visit, I was inspired to do a collaboration with my students. And because every semester, class falls on the best day of the year, which is Halloween, we had a collaborative Halloween shoot with um, the Close app. So this is the work of Faith Carter. She shot a student who, um, wanted to be influenced by The Shining and dressed up like the story of us. And then my student Faith is really into film noir and she did a, um, a shoot and this is all shot remote. And I know I only have five minutes. So I posted all of this work on my website. And when I'm finished shooting, um, finished sharing my screen, I will send that to you all. Um, but to make a long story short, I broke the entire semester up into speed lights, continuous lights and strobes. And the overarching theme was shaping light and learning how to make things work. At the end of the day, um, I always encourage my students to use what they have, not to make equipment intimidating and be very resourceful. Great. And I will Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so Thanks. much. And I'm sure there will there'll be questions. We'll we'll move on. Um, but there's there'll definitely if people have questions, put them in the chat. All right, Elena. Hi everybody. I'm going to thank you, Brady, for this fabulous presentation. Um, I'm going to um, I'm sorry, we use a different platform. Uh, I'm going to see. Oh, all right. I'm trying to share screen up. I'm so okay. sorry. I have Keynote open, so I press share screen. I also developed this habit of talking out loud. Um, okay. I need, thank you for, Anne, for saying that this is very kind of like um, informal. So I need somebody to give me a suggestion how I can share my screen. Got you covered. So in the um, uh, Zoom uh, window at the bottom, you'll see a green uh, button with an arrow up. You're going to select that button, and then you should see your um, screen that you're attempting to share, um, and just hit the share uh, blue button at the bottom. So all I see are um, exclamation point triangles. Oh, no. That's bad. <laughs> what does that mean? I have no I idea. Um, so exit Keynote um, from your full screen. Just have it exist as um, a, uh, you know, a collapsed um, standard screen. It's not in full screen. OK. Try it again now that you're not um, with Keynote not in full screen. See if it comes up as an option. So back down to the green button, clicking on that. That should present you with a whiteboard, iPhone, iPhone, iPad, whatever else. Whiteboard. OK. Um, then underneath that set of options should be one of your screens. And I'm assuming that you're working on one screen rather than multiple screens. So. OK, it's not. I'm sorry, it's not working. I can. Would you like um, somebody else to go next while I figure Perfect. this out? Okay, sure. That sounds like a great cool. idea. There's also been a, a request, and we could go back to Brady really briefly to for when before you talk before you as you're presenting your class to talk about whether you're doing synchronous, asynchronous, or hybrid, and presumably maybe also yeah hybrid flex in person. 
The um, entire semester was synchronous online. It was a four hour class on Friday. So it was um, that amount of time was a little intimidating to get my mind around how I would keep the energy up, make it interactive and pace it so no one has Zoom fatigue. Right. That's the worst. Right. That was, uh, it was synchronous online. Okay, perfect. And I, um, well, I, I can talk with you all individually. I don't want to take okay. No, that'll be good. Yeah. We'll pass it on to Jeff right now, but we'll come back to it too. I, I think there'll be some more questions. So, yes. Welcome, Jeff. Great, thank you. Um, I taught um, synchronous online also, um, and probably like many of us, you know, I made the transition last spring um, and found it quite easy because I had some experience teaching online. I um, was able to move two levels of digital photography and a documentary photo class um, onto Zoom. Um, but then knowing that I needed to teach studio lighting this past fall semester, um, it was a little daunting about how to make that experience work um, for the students. Um, so I just wanted to touch on and share some of the changes um, that I made to the studio photography class. Um, probably the biggest thing that I felt that I would not experience was the sense of collaboration and community in the studio. Um, so I really focused on trying to uh, make that happen for the students in the fall. Um, the first thing that I did um, was to create a group project um, to capture that sense of collaboration, which is so key with students working together um, in the studio. Um, on campus and in the studio, uh, my experience has been that um, the students really come together, help each other, and learn a lot um, working collaboratively um, in teams. Um, unlike Brady, I didn't do a lot of uh, demo um, synchronously. Um, so I wanted to, to capture um, you know, the collaborative aspect. And the way I did that was to create a multi-week um, team project where students could build their team working skills and also be exposed to other roles in the creative process um, besides always being the photographer. Um, so for the first week, the first part of the assignment, um, students created a treatment um, articulating an idea um, for a photo shoot. And they pitched this concept um, to the class in a um, presentation, which was a multi-page a PDF that included um, a written statement about the concept, uh, logistical issues, um, and inspirational photos um, for color palette, location, and styling. Um, as part of the prep uh, for this first part of the assignment, um, students um, read some articles um, about the similarities and differences between being a creative director and an art director. Um, and the different roles that they play as part of a creative team. Um, so for part two of the assignment, um, students shot another classmate's concept. Um, so the art director and a classmate photographer were required to check in with each other during the week. Um, the art director was to give guidance and feedback to the photographer um, and the photographer would adapt and if necessary, reshoot uh, before presenting the work um, for critique. Um, so for this part and the final part of the assignment, the students also did some reflective writing um, about their experience um, in these different roles as part of a creative team. Um, and then finally, for the third part of the project, students traded files uh, with a classmate and edited someone else's raw um, photo that a classmate had created the previous week. Um, so again, um, editors and art directors worked in pairs and were required to meet outside of class um, to make sure that the edits matched the director's vision for the shoot. Um, another assignment that I gave this past fall was um, for students to make a photo a day. Um, so I adopted 
some existing assignments, uh, the best of the significant photo project uh, from Steve Anschel's book, Digital Photo Assignments and uh, Mark Kleth's Everyday Assignment in Photography 4.0. Um, and the goal was for students to develop their photographic practice through um, daily shooting. Um, I felt this was important um, since students were um, working in isolation and didn't have a community of learners on campus, wanted to make sure that they were um, keeping on top of their practice. Um, so this prompt uh, kept them focused, provided them with a daily um, activity and we would start each class uh, by having the student present um, one of these photos from uh, the past week um, that, they have sh that they had shot. Um, so I viewed it as a low risk way for students um, to grow their practice um, as a form of visual note taking, which could lead to um, a more formal photo shoot um, or an observation of light um, that they might recreate um, using the strobes later on in the semester. Um, the last thing that I wanted to um, share um, was using Pinterest um, for the first time this uh, semester. Um, I had gotten the idea from a presentation that uh, Garen Horner did a couple of years back at a national um, SPE conference. Um, so whenever I give a assignment, I always get students to uh, look at and write about um, the work of artist photographers whose imagery relates to uh, the learning objectives for the project. Um, so they might share these in person or um, in a journal or an online discussion board. Um, and this past semester I used Pinterest um, for this purpose. Um, really found that it gave the students a sense of ownership as um, collaborators and they were able to add um, subboards um, to the board that I had set up for our studio lighting class. Um, so in addition to sharing inspiration for assignments, we also had some boards for um, DIY studio hacks. Um, I felt that this was important um, since the students had just checked out lighting kits from the university and were really on their own in terms of backdrops and light modifiers, um, but especially trying to make all of this work in really small home spaces or dorm rooms. Um, also um, prioritizing investing in equipment post-graduation is always a topic of conversation um, and having students working from their homes, um, it really moved this uh, conversation to the fore. Um, and that was something else that we were able to use uh, Pinterest for um, researching and sharing um, gear um, that could be useful um, to the students. Um, I guess the last thing that I wanted to mention, um, you know, I, I view my role as an educator, as a guide on the side. Um, so for the studio lighting class, I tend to, you know, demo in the first couple of classes and then just, you know, circulate around the studio while students are working. Um, I used office hours on Zoom um, pretty successfully one-on-one uh, -on -one to troubleshoot um, with students if they were having um, technical issues or if they needed to check in um, for feedback. Um, you know, on campus students will, will come, you know, to the office, I have an open door policy, but, you know, I did find that that was useful uh, using Zoom uh, this past semester just to you know, sit down and have the student point their camera at their setup and kind of see what was going on and be able to troubleshoot um, remotely. Um, so I'll just uh, stop there. Hey, thanks so much. Thank you. Um, should we go to Barbara? Sure. Um, so, yeah, I teach a two-part class at the University of the Arts, so to juniors. Um, so it's fall, spring, and mercifully, when the pandemic hit last year, I had already had this group of juniors for um, a semester and a half. And when we came back from uh, SPE, they pretty much said, don't return to campus. 
And it was pretty freaky because I had students who had had some gear. I had students who had a little bit of gear. I had students who had absolutely no gear whatsoever, only a cell phone. So I had to figure out what I would do. In the meantime, they're in a panic. How are we ever going to work because we don't have access to the studio? So um, my initial um, approach was to um, just let them know that they can harness light, that there's light everywhere and they need to be able to access it. And in order to bring that concept home, I actually did their assignments for them in advance to show them that it could be done. Um, we, I had already just done demonstrations in shooting glass, shooting metal. Um, we had already done all the portrait stuff. So we were mostly on, on uh, some more complicated things. Um, so I went ahead and did that. And I will also share my screen, I guess. <clears throat> So um, the first thing I did was to shoot this um, cocktail and showed them that they could use a garbage bag and a window and still end up with something that looked pretty great because that was the concept of, of lighting from behind. And that's what it looked like um, in my studio, which my studio office is, is really it's kind of small because there are two complete exhibitions here um, looking for a home, hint, hint. Um, and if they were to go someplace, I could actually shoot a little bit more. Um, anyway, uh, so then I used um, just the lamp in my living room and there was another table lamp behind it to do edge lighting on a glass of wine. And um, I would mark everything that I did and show it to them of what, you know, that's the television reflected in the glass and how do I get rid of that? And, you know, there are the other lights that are coming in from the back. So, um, and then I did just simple still life things. Um, this I made with, uh, I took a box and again, put a piece of plastic over top of it to make a soft box so that you know, it's the concept of the soft light, but they had no excuses not to have something that they could actually use. Um, I also, I think this was uh, just a desk lamp. Um, I did, uh, this was just the same picture without any light. And then I lit it with a flashlight and just used light painting to do it. Um, it came out to look like that. So there was always something I knew that they could put their hands on to use as a source of light. Um, the next, the other assignment they had to do was, um, I had them all, uh, I had a bag of fortune cookies and they all had to choose a fortune cookie. And then they had to illustrate their fortune as if it were the, the cover of fortune magazine. So, um, so I tried to do that myself and um, I, put some fortune cookies on paper clips. And this is my fancy spotlight. So it's a solo cup over top of the desk lamp. So I knew they would have solo cups. Um, and then I honed in on it for them to see what it would be look like to string something that would hang and have to retouch that out. And then there was my magazine. Um, and they did a really good job with just me showing them that little bit of stuff. And um, this was one of their lighting assignments. So also just using a desk lamp, um, some window light, window light. This one was more of a strobe light, the metal did pretty well. Their Fortune magazine covers came out pretty nice. And oh. then they had a final project to do. And again, some of them had strobes and I encouraged them to use anything like car headlights. Um, this person had one light. They were able to do still life. This was, uh, these were done with um, garage work lights. So from like hardware stores 
um, this is this is a student who only had a, a cell phone, so she used refrigerator lights and uh, microwave lights and candle lights to do self portraits and window light. So um, after I got through that. I decided that I wanted to expand on this a little bit in a class I offered in at ICP doing uh, portraiture with minimal lighting. And I really didn't have um, uh, a lot of crew or staff that I could be filmed in person doing this. So I thought, well, I, I'm just, I don't want them to see a video. I would rather do this in person. So I wanted to take pictures of everything that I did and be able to talk over the examples as we went through it. So, you know, just basic stuff with reflectors um, and what that looks like. And then I went to the Home Depot $10 lights because you can hopefully afford a $10 light um, and strapped that to a light stand. And I did cajole my friend into modeling for me. And I used a, um, it was a $5 piece of fabric I got at Bed Bath & Beyond. I think it was a shower curtain or a piece of curtain um, just to, so they could use it as like a big soft box, big light, soft light, um, and showed them that this would be the portrait that they could end up with. And we went through, I put a hair light up and what that would look like and and I went through every single thing I had in terms of a light. So I did speed lights and what that would look like. And, you know, that's going to be a harsher light. And then put this, the speed light behind the curtain and I doubled the curtain and then I put it through an umbrella and then I put a soft box on it and put that through the umbrella and was able to show them, okay, so here's butterfly lighting and just, you know, taking pictures of everything I did the examples of it. I took pictures of the back of the flash and all the settings. Um, I went to, I went from basic lights to through to speed lights. Um, this is a former student in Philadelphia that, okay, we've got a window light and we've got a big piece of foam core and we can make a portrait like this. And then I used flash on camera. So we get really harsh flash taking pictures of what it, things look like, bouncing it, putting a modifier on it, bouncing it off a big white wall, zooming it in off the big white wall so they could see what the zoom hotspot would look like, um, moving it to a different side with a different modifier, that different looks. And then again, taking pictures of what the setup looked like, how far away things were from each other And we just did as many different portraits as I could in that space. Oh, there's my friend again in his, <laughs> in my living room. Um, so then we also put uh, gels on. So big yellow gel and uh, a blue gel. So this is what that looked like. And then I switched it up and we decided to use this um, brick wall and put a black car black cloth at the end of it and make it look like an alleyway um, with um, some fake Photoshop light. Um, and then I went to my friend's studio, also a former student in Baltimore, and we used her big windows. And this was a big scrim that I had, um, but I also, I might have a picture of it in here. I made a scrim out of um, uh, canvas, uh, picture stretcher frame and garbage bag. But in reality, that actually cost as much as some of the cheap reflectors you can get on uh, B&H or Adorama now. So I don't know that that was a good move, but I still had something I could use. Um, so we did big soft lights. And then we do a reflector. So window light and a reflector and what that would look like. So um, when it's too harsh or when you can soften it up. So how you can move the reflector um, to change that light and be really conscious of where it is. We did um, some really harsh flashlight and then what it can look like when you soften it up. There's my homemade reflector off of the 
canvas frame. Um, and then I did another thing with just metering outside, taking pictures of the meter. So I could show them at all of the settings, um, really harsh light, how to make it look softer. Um, this time around, I'm, I've created a dolly off of a tripod and um, a carpet, the rubber stuff you put under a carpet. So I'm gonna use that to wheel around in my little space so that I can do some more uh, hands-on stuff, live stuff. Uh, this was another shoot outside where we used the reflector really far away, flash, fill flash with the hair light, and then um, some just big, big, um, big reflectors, scrims. So um, this next semester, I have to start off with juniors that I have never had before, have never had lighting, I don't know them. And I have created the class around doing the same thing. So basic, you know, lights, reflectors, windows, and then into the speed lights, because that's all they will have access to. They won't have any strobe kits or anything. So um, it will be speed lights and speed lights that they'll each have two. So they'll, we'll be able to do on camera flash, off the camera flash and two flashes that talk to each other. And I'm hoping to um, set up individual sessions with them so that I can pop into their shoots and see what they're doing. I'll have them um, actually uh, take a lot of pictures and a lot of notes about what they're doing. So. Um, the other thing I just want to show you is uh, there's this software, this 3D software that is actually pretty incredible if you want to try to um, teach students with like fake lighting and fake sets. Um, it's like $49 for the basic set. So um, I'll put the I'll put that link in the chat. And uh, that's all I've got. Thank you so much, Barbara. Thanks. Uh I think uh, Elena is ready to go. Yes, I am. Thank you. OK, so um, Barbara, I think we need you to stop sharing screen. screen. Oh, yeah. You got it. Thank you. OK, folks, everybody can see my screen. Yep. Yeah, yep, yep, so just you. a little, I'll try to be um, five minutes, um, uh, just to just to kind of set the tone. I teach at a graphic design program. Our entire photography program consists of six courses and studio lighting is one of them. Um, and uh, my courses have been like just uh, consolidated more and more and more. So um, when teaching a lighting class, it has to be really comprehensive. And most of our students are not, we don't have a photo major. So most of our, my students are design or communication majors. Um, and as, as many kind of like non-major strategies as I can employ to keep students creative and engaged as possible. But also it comes to how much students um, engage with the, with the discipline um, while they're a different major. So here, here we go. I taught the studio lighting class a semester. Um, Luckily, we did all the like introduction to strobes and still life out of the way before COVID hit. I would do things differently, but here I'm going to share some of the um, strategies that I have, um, you know, fine tuned for my class. So a couple of things that are important to me um, that became extremely important um, are these uh, following. Um, bullet points, elegant assignment design became really crucial because students were really responding to what they're doing, what they're asked to do and how and why, uh, building confidence with equipment, and then self-reliance. We teach a lot of students who are first-generation college students, so those skills that um, are like we all want to see in all students and not uh, are still growing. Um, and I, I developed really uh, in, intentional feedback and reflection strategies and cultivating community became really crucial because students were like lonely and, um, and really suffering. So a couple of things, um, I'm going to introduce a few assignments that I did as a, as a 
location lighting assignments. Again, students were left without studios. Many of them didn't have proper equipment. Some of them had flashes, but most of them had lamps. So we had to do a lot of DIY um, strategies. So um, building confidence in how they use light was, was crucial. So here is an editorial portrait assignment where we uh, stress the importance of metering. And this was a mixed light assignment where students introduced flashes, speed lights into existing lights. So metering for both flash and environment, experimenting, failing, taking notes, sharing with peers and creating the reflections. Um, these are some of the really important like pillars of my class because the reflections helps them build um, uh, understand what they need to do for the for the following assignment. I'll talk about this a little more. So here is our um, fabulous Brady Robinson giving um, a presentation how to shoot on location. This is like a week before we went remote. Um, a couple of things that uh, student self-reliance um, became really apparent because students left the dorms without their cameras and they had to really create accommodations. Um, like different stories, crazy stories are happening. So um, we really had uh, discussions in class. What do you need to do? Why are you doing it? Supporting students one-on-one -on -one with acknowledging their struggles and holding their hands became one of the things that I, became, I, I started doing a lot more um, and using DIY strategies for lighting and um, lighting modifiers. In terms of elegant assignment design, here is a, a social commentary assignment um, that I had to fine tune to make it relevant to students' lives and experiences. It became very open-ended um, and clarity of expectations and clarity of assessment practices um, became very important to what I'm doing and why. I just realized that it's probably, you're not seeing the full screen, so I apologize for that. Um, so I had to be creative thinking about what assignments I would like to do personally and how they can be open-ended enough for students to engage with. Um, here is a fashion stories assignment. All of my students are into fashion. Um, and it, uh, oh, this is, we created uh, a three different prompts for um, location lighting, it would be, outdoor location with balanced with flashlight, indoor location with ambient light um, and balancing with flashlights and a dark location um, where students get to practice drag shutter or slow exposure in combination with strobe lighting. And they had a lot of fun. This was one of the final assignments. Um, we also introduced creative treatments so students can practice their professional skills and understanding client and assignment work. Um, here is a, a few student samples. They photographed themselves, they photographed their families, they photographed in their living room. Um, it was really interesting. I feel like I, uh, this was a, a joy to work with them and even though we had so much troubleshooting. Um, one of the most important things that I did uh, during this um, you know, crazy time is developing the feedback and reflection um, strategy where students give each other feedback remotely and um, working with small groups and asynchronously. And I'm gonna go through these quickly. So they create individual pro project proposals and they get feedback on those proposals. Um, and they work in small group, giving each other feedback on proposals. And then the following week, giving each other feedback on the work they produce and each of the steps they have to create a reflection and an action plan. So it's not just this feedback that gets lost in the cyberspace, but they actually create action items that they have to incorporate in their consequence shoots. Um, and these are the questions that students came up with in our conversations. What would you like to get out of your critique? So some of the examples are, does my idea come across in the images? What could I do on a deeper level? How can I push my creative work? How can I challenge the viewer perception, um, visual principles, creative principles, and lastly was the lighting strategies. And then they have to um, fill out the critique form. So they have some accountability, they get graded on it. 
So this is some student examples before work. This is, you guessed it, it's this project on mental illness. Um, and this is a little bit from student reflections where they talk about how they, they reflect on the feedback that have gotten from their peers. And this is the same student's work, the following photo shoot. And this is the last one. So I was happy to see how, um, how much deeper they're engaged with visual culture and just what it means to communicate sadness or isolation. Here's another student um, doing a project on um, work ethics. Same thing, reflection. And this is after the critique. So it's a lot simpler. These are design students, so they incorporated text and image. Um, and lastly, I wanted to talk about camaraderie and community, uh, utilizing community support. Thank you, Brady, and all the visiting artists. I had the commercial photographers, fine art photographers uh, who would come for 15, 20 minutes to talk to students. Um, and some things that I learned as an educator is acknowledging hard times, acknowledging inequity, acknowledging that my students have different um, socioeconomic struggles and in acknowledging inequity and individual experiences of students became crucial to cultivating community in my classrooms and making students feel seen and a lot of reaching out, supporting, holding hand. Um, and I'm going to skip portfolio because I'm sure everybody does portfolio. So um, these are the little things that we did in, in my class. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. So, yes, thank you. And there is a question. Um, we're going to go to Lindsay now, but there's a few questions for you in the in the chat. And, and just as we go to Lindsay, I mean, if all of for all of our panelists, if if uh, if you'd be willing, we we certainly would love to post uh, one of your assignments as part of our assignment section on on Photofica. And I'll work with you to, to make it so that it you know fits in the format and, and is accessible to everybody. So. It's a real treasure trove here of, of ideas and strategies kind of across the board. All right, Lindsay. Hi, I was um, remembering being a student and getting excited about going last because maybe we'd run out of time and I could just <laughs> another time. But um, I'll just go for it and be pretty quick. Um, I'm sharing my screen now. Let's see. Bye, mine. Here we are. All right. Can you all see it? We sure do. Okay, great. Um, studio lighting without the studio. So the, the good news is um, I'm not gonna be doing a lot of repeating what we've already heard, um, which makes me feel like, oh no, am I a bad teacher or do I just have, I just have a different approach for studio lighting without the studio. Um, some of the assignments that I gave were absence of light, night light, lighting inventory, Photoshop as a light source, DIY home studio and product photography, and domestic space. Um, this, the top right is a, um, a, an image that a student made who, who came up with it after she'd accidentally broken the egg she was photographing. So it kind of makes me feel like it was a good representation of how the year went really. Um, so I began with getting them to think about the opposite of lighting, so darkness and the absence of light. And their goal was to make images where darkness took up the majority of the frame. And just a little, oh, just so everybody knows, these were online classes that were um, synchronous. And we met twice a week, but one, one day was kind of open lab day and individual meetings. And I was fortunate to have a very small group this semester. It was seven students. So we got to dig into everyone's work really um, effectively during critiques. So here's some more examples from that assignment. Um, and I loved opening this way because it, but my students aren't, photo majors. So a lot of them were taking the class as an elective option. And 
a lot of them didn't understand the mechanics of using a digital SLR or some of them hadn't photographed in manual mode ever. So in a lot of ways, we were starting from scratch and all of them were learning from home. Nobody was on campus and they didn't have access to really any sort of equipment. So in the beginning, I thought maybe I'll have an assignment where I make them spend $20 at a hardware store. And then instead, I just decided to have them use the light that's around them, starting with what's outside at night. Um, and then a nightlight assignment. I'll go through these pretty quickly, but I can post the slideshow if anyone wants to look later. And then probably my favorite assignment is lighting inventory. So there's one week where I told them for homework to go home and make a list of everything around them that emits light. And I didn't tell them why because, well, you'll, you'll see why after. What happened was some of them made pretty extensive lists. And when they found out that the next assignment was to photograph one object, lighting it with every item on their lighting inventory, they were a little upset when they had to figure out how to do some of these things, <laughs> but it ended up being pretty amazing. So this is an iPad light. That's a great assignment. Thank you. It was, I really love it. Isn't this fun? Um, so the one on the right, the top right is a, a cell phone. And then we jumped into a DIY home studio product photography unit. And during the critique, I had them make a phone picture of their studio setup so we could see what the setup was that made the images that they were sharing. Hmm. The top left is the studio in this one. I think it's great. Um, and then we spent a long time talking about using Photoshop as a light source. So how can you pull light out of darkness in an image? Or how can you reveal some detail that wasn't there in the image as you shot it? These are a couple examples of that. And that, that brought us into a composite assignment that they had to photograph um, a space within their living space at multiple times of the day and then make a composite of all of those images. This is just an example of one of the kind of free choice final projects that I loved. So they, the final was to pick an assignment we had done over the course of the semester and take it a step further. And that's what I have to share with you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So that was exactly five minutes. I, <laughs> and on that note, um, as many of you know, I am our um, our our end of meeting timekeeper, and and obviously um, uh, we are way over time in terms of presentations. But I think there was so much incredible information and insight on to um, teaching studio lighting um, that I'm, I'm thrilled that we had time with each of you today. I think it was a really interesting um, experiment to see so many so much variety uh, in terms of approach. Um, uh, I encourage you all to you know to flood the chat with any questions that you might have. Um, uh, as you know, um, Betsy and John and I um, will always um, do due diligence in following through. Um, and uh, and I think John, great idea to um, for those of you guys who have participated today to get an assignment up on the website. I think there's been some really amazing stuff today. Thank you. Yeah. I. I know, I know we don't really have time to dig into the questions. I think that's the subtext of what you just said, Anne. Um, yeah. But I was, I was thinking that, that uh, I mean, there's so much, it's so rich. Um, 
but there, there are levels, there was a lot of practical strategies, but there was some really nice kind of con conceptual things happening in terms of how you, you all approach your class classrooms. And I thought one thing in particular was this, this idea of collaboration in a way that, that was in some ways different from what happens in the in-person classroom. And that was, that was kind of thrilling and touching, I think. Um, and then I also think this idea of these like assignments that it sounds like some of you would have never come up with in a, again, in a, a conventional classroom. So um, I was really like, really touched by all that. Really appreciate that. But I really, the, the idea of, of, of collaboration seems to be um, really important to kind of cutting through a lot of the isolation and even giving assignments about isolation, um, requiring collaboration is just kind of was really great. And the, and the quality of work that came out of all of your classes was phenomenal, right? And so that was really, um, I'm, there are so many things I, I want to steal from you all, just FYI. I mean, the fortune cookie. I mean, how many fortune covers of Fortune magazine are there going to be? That's a perfect, perfect thing for, you know, I totally want to steal that. So I just want to say, John, that we probably picked the best. There was a variety of how students did. <laughs> we just showed the best one. Of course, of course. That's what we're supposed to do. Yeah. That's what we yeah. always do. Yeah. That's you know, look, that's what the time you're in promotion packages is is like the three students that actually did the assignment. <laughs> so um for all of you who presented, um all of you are happy to share, right? To share these assignments, and we'll, as as Anne said, we'll we'll make we'll make them available. Um, I guess there's no question there. It was just a comment and a kind of reinforcement that. that and I'll and I'll follow up with everybody just to try and make it so that if you if you look at our site, we have a specific assignment that has you know various things that you know and that we that we can link to, and I'm happy to to take your materials and and make it you know usable for people. So. And just as I did um, uh, for the last uh, um, Photofica, I will also consolidate down the chat. So the questions and responses um, so that uh, especially software and links are available to you all. I will um, be able to do that hopefully by the end of this week, but videos usually go up within a week, usually. Um, again, we're, we're doing this, um, uh, you know, uh, for the love of, of photo education and, and we'll, we'll turn things around as fast as we can. And so, I just also posted Tom. Tom made a YouTube channel from, from our last Photo Fika uh, of all of his darkroom demos. So those are all on YouTube now and I, I posted a link to it. I just wanna, wanna say um, if you guys have suggestions for future Photo Ficas, I mean, this partly came out of a request for for studio lighting. Let us know. Um, equally, if you if you have something you want to talk about and share, uh, you know, don't don't be afraid to to write us and and ask to talk because um, yeah. we're. I, I just I think this is is really I'm really excited. I'm excited by today and kind of kind of the resources uh, and the ideas and brain power. So, but I think many of you have been here know there's been a pretty wide range from a, a yoga class to, you know, to today's. So throw out ideas that you have and uh, we'll help you make them happen. Yeah, and, and Jeff, uh, are you gonna, did you post your Pinterest boards or what? My favorite. Um, yeah, they're, yeah. they're up there, yeah. Yeah, my favorite ban on Trump was his, they banned him on Pinterest. So <laughs> <laughs> you have to be pretty bad to be banned on Pinterest. <laughs> All right, well, everyone, thank you. Thank you for being here today to our guests. Thank you immensely for sharing um, uh, your practice um, and your classrooms with us today. Um, we'll be hanging out for just a few minutes, um, trying to respect everybody's time um, and uh, see you all in two weeks. Thanks. Bye, everybody. Thank you so I much. Know, I think that's a and, great idea. Yeah, and thanks. Yes, and thanks. Good. Thank you very much. Thank yeah, you. and thanks to our presenters who yes. who who volunteered yeah. uh, at the spur of the moment to uh, to do the impossible, which was give five minute presentations. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> it was a trap. It was like Lindsay. It was like your list, asking everybody to list list stuff, and then we then we trapped you afterwards. You know, <laughs> when you when you when you all receive one minute notifications from me, that was like after six minutes. <laughs> Except for Lindsay, Lindsay literally, literally was was exactly five minutes. It felt like an hour. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, actually, that's another subject I want to talk about is how time gets distorted when you're on Zoom. Uh, I've actually read recently about that, and I've talked before about how I have to fill silence because I freak out about it. But our, our sense of time when we're on Zoom and uh, Elena, you probably felt it today when you were trying to figure out how to get, get on the computer. It wasn't that mm -hmm. long, but, but when you're stumbling and it feels like it's forever, mm -hmm. Zoom time. Yeah. We're human beings. None of us are, are, are Steve Jobs and, uh, you know, I don't know, like waiting for the, for the keynote thing. <laughs> <laughs> One more thing. Yep, your cat was a good touch. Oh yeah, that was fantastic. That was great. Yeah, she did my <laughs> voice when I start zooming, and then she's like on the table. Yeah, and she's been yeah. my TA throughout all of this. <laughs> Jeff, my my dog knows when it's five thirty, um, uh, and or about five o'clock, and immediately starts like hanging out around my feet, like trying to get my attention. Like, hey, your day is supposed to be over now. Come on, <laughs> let's do something else. <laughs> So that's awesome. I get it. I totally get it. <laughs> they want to participate in what we're doing, right? Their job is to help you keep time, keep track of time. Right. Exactly. Exactly. We're off a little bit. I fed her early before this started so she wouldn't be so vocal during the Zoom, but <laughs> it's good. I saw a video today, uh, someone's cat kept getting in their way and it says that they're mirroring. And if you put uh, like either something that resembles a computer or whatever you're working on, they'll mirror you, but sit in front of their own computer. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. We'll have to try that. <laughs> Probably buy one, right? All right. So oh, I'm going to assume that those who are still here either have a question that they have a burning desire to ask or have actually stepped away from their screen and don't know that we're trying to wrap this up. Um, <laughs> so um, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and say thank you all again. Thank you to our guests again. Um, and I'm gonna call it, I'm gonna call it a meeting.